So after the court strikes down the CDA, Congress tries again with a statute called the Child Online Protection Act, or COPA. And COPA has a very long history through the courts, and that's why I call it the COPA saga. So the COPA statute says said that whoever knowingly and with knowledge of the character of the material in interstate commerce, foreign commerce, or by means of the World Wide Web, a specific reference here to the web, makes any communication for commercial purposes that is available to any minor, and that includes material harmful to minors, it is unlawful. It defines a minor as a person under 17 years of age and defines material harmful to minors to track the Miller obscenity test. Now, the district court issues a preliminary injunction against the enforcement of the statute. It goes up to the uh, Court of Appeals and then goes up to the Supreme Court. So the posture is that there's a preliminary injunction finding the statute um, unconstitutional that gets up to the Supreme Court. So the majority opinion authored by Justice Thomas, the majority as to the result, you'll see there are a number of uh, different opinions, and there is no kind of majority as to the reasoning, but there is a majority to the result. The majority as to the result is to say, well, kind of the facial challenge saying that uh, this reliance on community standards renders the statute substantially overbroad, it's, it's not specific enough, it's not detailed enough, um, the statute is not facially overbroad, it can refer to the community standards under the Miller test. But as you'll see, what ends up happening is that the case is remanded for further proceedings, and then it comes back to the Supreme Court again. So before we get there, let's talk about uh, some of the other opinions about the reasoning. So uh, Tom Thomas's reasoning is joined by Scalia, Rehnquist, and O'Connor. And, you know, the, the issue here is whether the community standard has to be a local standard. So this statute is trying to establish uh, a national standard for what kind of material could be available to children. And the, the uh, facial challenge was to say Miller requires a local standard. And uh, Thomas's reasoning, here joined by Scalia, Rehnquist, O'Connor, says, no, it doesn't have to be a local standard. Miller permits a local standard, but doesn't require a local standard. Um, the definition in COPA of the kind of material uh, that is defined as, as uh, prohibited is material that applies, appeals to the prurient interest. It has no literary or scientific value, and therefore the definitions in the statute really limit the kind of material that, that could be covered. Um, and, you know, notice this, another sort of bit of uh, cyber exceptionalism creeping in here. Thomas says, if we were to hold this unconstitutional, what we would say is that there can be no federal obscenity law as applied to the web, because the web is not local, right? The web transcends localities. And if you're going to have to uh, say that kind of the most permissive locality that's available on the web is the one that must govern, uh, you know, then effectively you're saying there, there can't be any regulation at all. And uh, Thomas says, you know, if a publisher chooses in, in sort of the brick and mortar world, if a publisher chooses to send material to a particular community, then that community standards are going to, you know, the publisher is going to have to abide by that community standards for the purpose of obscenity law. And the fact is, if you're distributing your material to every community in the nation, then you have to presume that you're sending it to very restrictive communities as well as very permissive communities. And so ultimately, um, the result here is to vacate the uh, holding that the statute is invalid and to send it back uh, to the Court of Appeals, actually, for further proceedings to develop um, how this standard would actually apply to the statute at issue. Now, Justice O'Connor, again, uh, concurs. Connor... Um, says, in fact, that a national community standard is necessary for Internet obscenity. Notice, that, again, this, this thread in O'Connor, in O'Connor's jurisprudence of the Internet, uh, of, of, at this period in time, of, of pretty significant cyber exceptionalism. Uh, 
Further, O'Connor says this notion that there are these local communities, like what's per, what's permissible in Maine, uh, might not, you know, might be less than what's permissible in in Las Vegas or New York, is kind of collapsing. And part of the reason it's collapsing is exactly because of the internet. Justice Kennedy writes a concurrence joined by Souter and Ginsburg. Kennedy ultimately agrees with a decision to remand, um, but Kennedy says that the web complicates all this. Uh, you know, how do you judge something as a whole, judge the work as a whole, as the Miller test requires, when the work is in the context of the web? In effect, Kennedy is, again, sounding a note of cyber exceptionalism. What is the work? Is it that individual file or is it that file in the context of a variety of other things on a website or is it that file in the context of the whole World Wide Web? How do you judge the work as a whole? Do you effectively have to judge um, the work as, as a whole? And uh, Justice Kennedy says, really what's going on here is we need more factual development. We need to know more about who the material that's uh, at issue in a particular case is trying to reach um, and um, who it's actually reaching and how that applies to the, to the interconnected context of the Internet as a whole. Justice Stevens dissents. So Stevens says, really uh, kind of takes O'Connor and to some extent uh, Kennedy's arguments and flips them on their head and says... We can't use uh, any kind of community standards on the internet. Uh, and he you know, uses this nice little zinger here. If a prurient appeal and is offensive in a Puritan village, it may be a crime to post it on the web. And he is saying that there is simply no way to segregate speech on the internet. The internet is available to everyone all at once. Uh, and there simply is no way to have separate areas or, or ways in which you can discern that a child in, in some very conservative community might have access to the material. And Stevens even goes a little further and says, you know, the, the prurient interest aspect of the Miller test is hard to apply with respect to these kinds of things because he says really almost any depiction of nudity appeals to the prurient interest of a minor. I think he has in mind here, you know, like a 13 year old boy or something like that. Stevens does say that that kind of really hardcore por pornography really shouldn't be on, on the internet, but we just effectively can't regulate this. And, um, you know, notice again here, flipping it on its head, but a note of cyber exceptionalism. Um, we, in the real world, we can find communities and places where if we share a certain kind of uh, interest in sexually explicit speech, we can do that and other people don't have to directly be affected by it. If we don't want that, we can separate ourselves out from it. But we just can't do that in, and he uses the word, cyberspace. We just can't do that in, in cyberspace. Okay, so the case gets remanded. Uh, the Court of Appeals looks at it again under uh, the new articulation of this, as confused as it is that the Supreme Court gives them. And perhaps not surprisingly, the Court of Appeals says, uh, yep, we're going to uh, affirm the district court's injunction. We're going to say that the statute uh, is unconstitutional. And then it comes back up to the Supreme Court. The court takes it once again on cert. And so now Justice Kennedy writes the majority opinion. And now Justice Kennedy is, is going to address this in a framework that's sort of more consistent with traditional First Amendment jurisprudence, uh, and particularly First Amendment jurisprudence aimed at the content of speech. And he asks whether this statute is the least restrictive means of advancing the purpose of trying to protect minors from having access to this. And he says no. He says users can implement on their own filtering and blocking software if they want to. And that kind of software, he says, can be relatively effective. Um, 
It can't be mandated by Congress, but it can be encouraged by Congress. And really what he's saying is it's, you know, it's up to the family, it's up to the parent to put software on the system that will filter this kind of material out. So Kennedy, uh, uh, in the majority opinion, says the injunction should be left in place. And and then this question of uh, that he's f uh, kind of surfaced here about filters and so on should go for a fuller factual development. Uh, and the trial court should determine, in fact, are filters uh, less effective than COPA or not? Um, look at kind of the current technological realities, the current technologies. Kennedy is really kind of assuming here that the trial court looks at it. It's going to it's going to see that there are some great technologies out there and that um, it will be able to put on the record a finding that, in fact, the statute is unnecessary.